Hundreds of planners from across the country have met in Lusaka for the fourth national planning conference and the annual general meeting. These two events, which are held consecutively every year, help planners refocus their energies on their job. It is also at these two events where planners get capacity building on their core of duty. The Mulungush International Conference Center in Lusaka played host to these two important events. Local Government Minister Charles Banda was represented by Lusaka Mayor Mao Sampa, Grace Event. The effect of climate change and its impact on productivity and sustainable development are real and are already being felt in most parts of the country. In line with the theme of this year's planning conference, promoting urban productivity and sustainable development. The theme for our conference is promoting urban productivity and sustainable development. I find that the theme is very responsive and is well aligned to government policies of promoting diversification in the energy sector, agriculture and tourism. We also know that the effects of climate change will affect poor households more. This is why we are prioritizing access to planned land. As you may know, Zambia is one of the most rapidly urbanizing countries in Southern Africa. We can take advantage of the population growth to develop even more markets and resilient infrastructure. Yes, we are today faced with several unprecedented economic, social, and environmental challenges as a result of this rapid urbanization, as can be seen in most of our cities. Here in Lusaka, we have people sleeping under the bridges. Um, in Buseko, there I went to visit people bringing their goods from Western province, the grass and timber. They sleep in the makeshift uh, plastic little houses uh, with and they have children there and their families and they've been there for long I think they just receive the goods and, and sell them um, that's unacceptable anywhere in, uh, in in the country our cities um, lack of access to water have problems lack of access to water food energy will become more critical if we do not plan our towns and cities well. No one must be left behind because they were excluded from planning. We must plan our country and nothing will stop us. The Zambia Institute of Planners, which has a membership of over 800, organizes the national planning conferences and the annual general meetings. This year, the Institute had a specific appeal to government over the role planners can make in national development. But because we believe that we have a special purpose to play in advising policymakers and lawmakers, we believe that we need to apply ourselves fully to the ideals that the most important job to a planner is to protect the public interest and also to ensure that we are supporting one another. We seek or we request that there should be increased budgetary allocation to planning departments across the country, to all local authorities and to all provincial planning units within the context of decentralization. Additional resources will enable planners to engage with citizens directly on the real issues that communities face and be able to develop contextually appropriate plans that promote responsible resource use and deepening of cultural and social networks for improved quality of life. We feel that the lack of a special assistant to the president on matters of spatial planning and planning in the country 
is resulting in slow progress by Zambia to achieve a fully planned set. And that for as long as Zambia does not take planning to the level of the presidency to ensure that every square meter and kilometer of our country is well planned and recognized in a formal plan, achievement of the targets within the new urban agenda, the Vision 2030, Soviet National Development Plan and the Vision 2020 and the Agenda 2063 will not be realized. The lack of that special planning office at the presidency will result in sluggish progress in that area and therefore we request that you may communicate to the president that the planners would be very very happy if a position of special assistant to the president on special planning could be created. Over the two days of the National Planning Conference, delegates were mainly drawn from city, municipal and town councils listened to various speakers. The Zambia National Building Society, which was the main sponsor of the National Planning Conference, showcased its products and services. When we look at Zambia National Building Society, we basically have three main strategic business units. Our core business is obviously mortgages, but these mortgages are supported by two other units. The first unit is banking, where we provide banking services. And the second unit is basically property and estates. You'll see as we make a progress in our slides that we also have a number of properties dotted across the country. For the Zambia Environmental Management Agency, their focus was on the planners and how they should consult locals in developmental projects. So a smart planner or environmental practitioner should be able to read the mood, but at the same time should be bold enough to make a decision that conforms to environmental norms for us to, sus to be sustainable. As you undertake the EIA, you need to strike a balance between the politics, the social, economic, and the biosphere, and then arrive at the in equilibrium. Planners also had the chance to get an update on the National Land Titling Program, which the Minister of Lands is implementing. What we have noticed is that in order for us to carry out titling, for instance, in order for us to carry out the land audit, we need to have the best information. By land audit, we mean what has happened, what, what changes have happened, who owns land where. These are is issues that are very critical. When someone brings in a subdivision and they sell off those subdivisions, they change the use of that land. How are we able to track those kind of things? We need a special, a special data infrastructure to be able to do that. From the local government perspective, Planners were also taken through the approval process for developmental projects. We launched the, the, the guidelines uh, for integrated development planning. And these guidelines are based on the provisions of the Urban and Regional Planning Act and are meant to guide local authorities in the preparation of their IDPs. So following the launch of the IDP guidelines, we commenced training and uh, there are a number of development partners that have come on board to help us uh, with IDP preparation in line with the new guidelines. And for a global perspective, on the drive to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, the United Nations Development Programme was on hand to update the planners. The 28th agenda and the SDGs, it's a new framework for action. 17 development goals, 169 targets. It's ambitious, new targets intended to focus and coordinate national policies towards a common vision for humanity. It's designed actually to inscribulate three pillars of sustainable development, the economic, social, and the environmental. It also reflects a shift in thinking. You know, from only focusing on development, you know, that we also need to think and satisfy the basic needs to uphold human rights. In the agricultural sector,
planners got further guidance on urban agriculture, its benefits, as well as its limitations. We feel that there is therefore a need to promote the promotion of urban agriculture in view of the above mentioned threats to agriculture land, which has led to the loss of agriculture production in the urban areas. The most striking feature of urban agriculture is that it is integrated into the urban economic and ecological system. So this distinguishes it from rural agriculture because this one is integrated into the urban economic and ecological system. Other presentations came from the Rusaka City Council, the Ministry of National Development Planning, the Economic Association of Zambia, and the Ministry of Infrastructure and Housing. The recent statistics that we have up to 2017 shows that uh, our net uh, FDI flows are increasing. So this, these are official statistics that we have. The net FDI flows are increasing. So that's what that uh, picture is showing. But you realize that you have the two bars that are there where we're looking at FDI assets and FDI uh, liabilities. So this is the language that we use. Uh, as you know, FDI, you, you may have a Zambian who wants or who has invested uh, in Malawi. So that's an FDI uh, outflow, or we call it an asset. So that's what we have. So it's FDI um, outflow, it's FDI coming out of Zambia. But we have the rest of the world coming to invest into Zambia. So we call that as a FDI liability. So. Based on the two, we come up with uh, what we call the net, the net flow, where we look at how much FDI is coming out of Zambia, how much FDI is, is, uh, is entering Zambia. So FDI inflows and FDI outflow, hence the net. So from the net FDI, we see that Zambia prospects are increasing, and for, that is from 2016 to 2017. Good planning practice is underpinned by appropriate professional values. We create winners and losers. We have power as well. I know there is political power and I'm coming to that very soon. In the process of exercising our profession, we must be conscious of our values. What values do we hold? How are we ashamed to state our values? Are we ready to sacrifice our comfort for those values? And that's where the integrity question comes in. Are we going to be the facilitators of the gazetting force? Are we going to be the facilitators of illegality in land development? Or is, are we the conduits of corruption in urban development? Those are questions that we need to ask. And you may partially forget about anti-corruption things. Corruption is a matter of myself, it's yourself, it's the being in me. What is it that I, I believe I should do and that which I believe I shouldn't do. This is very clear in the ZIP provisions. On the last day of the National Planning Conference, delegates toured the new Kenneth Kaunda International Airport, which is still under construction. After the two days of deliberations at the National Planning Conference, planners gathered for their annual general meeting on the third day. Here, various elected officials from the Zambia Institute of Planners gave reports.